Last week I had a really good question as to why I would actually need two filters when setting up a fuel system. The answer is actually pretty straightforward, so let me go ahead and open up these boxes and show you what's inside. The top box is going to be the AN wrench that we talked about last week. This is an adjustable wrench. It's specifically designed to work with AN fittings. You can see right here in the corners, it's actually notched out so it doesn't damage the corners of the fittings. In the next box, we have our 100 micron fuel filter. We actually talked about this filter last week and today we're gonna go ahead and talk about why you would actually need two of them. So we've got our first filter right here. On the box on the left hand side, we have the 30 micron fuel filter. And that one's a big boy, so let me go ahead and pull that one out of the box as well. This one actually comes with the tone mounting bracket. And in fact, this one was supposed to come with the tone mounting bracket too, so I don't know why this one didn't, but it was supposed to. And then we have the appropriate fittings for this one as well. This filter also seems to utilize a number 10 inlet and outlets. So that matches up with the 30 micron fuel filter that we looked at previously. And in the last box, we're going to have the fuel pump itself. This pump also came with its included fittings along with a couple electrical connections. I went ahead and removed the factory fittings and then installed the included AN fittings that came with the package. The included fittings were a dash 10 on the low pressure side and a dash 6 on the high pressure side. On a typical race car, this is basically the setup you're going to see. You're going to see a dash 10 and then on the high pressure side, you're going to see dash 6. If it's fuel injection, could be dash 8. On a carburetor application just like mine, you're going to see dash 8 or dash 10. 10, depending on the horsepower levels that you're looking at. Although we have a dash 10 on the low pressure side, the thread is actually a dash 8. So if you wanted to switch this out, you would go dash 8 ORB to whatever you're trying to do in an AN. So if your supply line was a dash 6, and you would go dash 6 AN to dash 8 ORB, and that's how you would made it to this fuel pump. On the other side, we have a dash 6 ORB to a dash 6 AN. But if you wanted to do the opposite and go from dash 6 to dash 8, you could just pick up the proper adapter to go to dash 6 ORB to dash whatever you wanted to in the AN. If you're shopping around at your local hydraulic store, you might be able to find them as a JIC fitting, which is essentially the same thing, but the JIC fittings tend to be made out of steel and AN fittings are made out of aluminum. For the sake of the video, I'm going to go ahead and replace the number 10 supply for a number 8 that we have in the box. So that way I can organize the filters a little bit easier. All right, so now back to the original question, why are there two fuel filters? You can see I've got all three components lined up in a row. And I've got both filters ran in the correct orientation as well. If you're confused on what the orientation is supposed to be, you can go ahead and grab the filter and look on the inside. If it looks hollow, that is going into the filter. And if you look on the back side and you just see a spring, that is the exit of the filter. And if you don't believe me, just go ahead and check the orientation on the filter itself. And the little arrow tends to agree with what I just said. If you're not sure about the orientation of the fuel pump, the same basic thing applies. So if you go ahead and take the big fitting off, you're gonna go ahead and look inside and there's actually going to be a mesh. So you can see fairly clearly that there is a mesh right there going into the fuel pump. And that's just in case any contaminants from the pre-filter head into the fuel pump itself to prevent any kind of major damage. When you have a fuel pump and a set of filters like this lined up along a frame rail, these filters are called the pre-filter and the post-filter. Pre-filter will filter anything that goes to the fuel pump. Post-filter is anything that leaves the fuel pump. If you guys check any fuel injection system with an in-tank fuel pump, if you go ahead and pull that fuel pump out of the fuel tank, you're gonna see that on the bottom of that fuel pump, there's a little screen mesh. That little screen is then pushed up against the floor of the tank, and that's where the fuel pump gets its supply of fuel from. That screen is actually designed to block contaminants that would be just a little bit too big and that would eventually damage the fuel pump on the inside. You guys will know that even though you have that filter attached to the bottom of that in-tank fuel pump, on the frame rail itself, you'll have another filter. And that's the filter that actually filters out the finer contaminants that would damage a carbureted or fuel injection system. What you have here is almost exactly the same thing. Because you have a dash 10 supply, that would go to your fuel tank or fuel cell, and that would feed this fuel filter directly. This has a larger 100 micron mesh, which will block contaminants up to 100 microns from passing through the filter and getting into the fuel pump. Contaminants larger than that would actually damage the fuel pump itself, but if the contaminants are smaller than that, they're small enough to bypass through the fuel pump and not damage it. 
They do that to not only protect the fuel pump, but also to allow the maximum amount of fuel flow as possible through the system. If you go ahead and take this fuel pump and look inside, you're actually going to see a screen mesh. The screen that's inside here is a filtration mesh that is very similar to the pre-filter. That's designed to catch all the contaminants that don't actually get caught in the pre-filter. But if the fuel pump has its own screen, why do you need a pre-filter? And the answer to that is actually serviceability. So if we go ahead and grab that pre-filter again, we can actually open that thing up. Taking the pliers that we talked about earlier, we can go ahead and pop this filter open. You'll see that it is also an O-ring sealed canister. Now that I've broken this loose, let's go ahead and take this off. Once you finish unscrewing the top, you're gonna have access to the filter media. If for whatever reason you start to lose flow or the filter gets a little too dirty or you just want to service the system, you can go ahead and pop this out, take the filter off of the lid, and then you can wash this filter out or replace it. If you run your system without this filter, instead of the contaminants being caught in here, they will get caught inside of the fuel pump. And as you guys can see, you cannot actually take this fuel pump apart. Once that screen inside the fuel pump is clogged, that's pretty much it. The fuel pump might still work, but because there's no room for fuel to flow, that would actually be the end of the life of the fuel pump. In order to prevent that from happening, that's what this filter is for. The second filter has a very similar purpose. I'm gonna go ahead and take the lid off of this one off as well. Pulling this out, you can see that the mesh is actually very similar to the mesh in that filter. The difference is that the holes in this one are much finer than they are in that one. For those familiar with fuel injection systems, you'll know that fuel injectors actually have their own screen, very similar to a fuel pump, and it's inside of the fuel injector. When you service the fuel injectors, you can go ahead and take those little screens out and replace them. Some people actually even take those filters out in order to improve fuel flow by a few cc's. But just like we talked about with the pre-filter, the, everything applies to the post-filter as well. If you eliminate the post-filter, even if you have a pre-filter, the pre-filter is only designed to protect the fuel pump. The post-filter is actually designed to protect everything after the fuel pump. Just because you have a filter before the pump doesn't mean that it's protecting the whole system. Each component has its own purpose, so when you're building out your fuel system, make sure you keep that in mind. Once again, if you have an in-tank fuel pump, you will have a little fuel sock on the bottom of the pump, and you won't actually need to install a pre-filter, but you should still always install a post-filter. I hope that answers the question as to why you would need two fuel filters on a fuel system. I will see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher, out.